Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. This will be a recording of the Board of Directors, May 11th, 1970, St. Joseph's Infirmary, Boardroom. Okay. 
it's not a mess. It's it's so it's so it's so bad. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> to be concluded. <laughs> Restated. That okay. <laughs> the motion has been seconded that we accept the resignations of Diana Simmons and Annie Lawrence Austin. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed. The motion. Should we call attention to the absences of, of Mrs. Graves and Mrs. Burns? She'll go out of her. office. This will be her last meeting except September, and she'll go out of office then. So well, I think it's a conflicting we'll date herself. that she can't. She was not eligible for re-election, so I think okay, for the one can't. meeting that um, all, I think you, your wife is calling She's attention to that because it does make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, I saw you. I think he's your new bus, a boss on the bus in Miami. Anyhow, yeah. what's the name of that ma uh, man? Dr. Yeah. yeah. He know with the today. date on the acceptance, maybe Margaret would rephrase it again, say it accepted as of such and such a date. Well, well didn't her letter of resignation put a date? Mm -hmm. It said, the, uh, did I say May 15th? Mm -mm. I didn't, I meant to, but that's all right. <coughs> We're just saying it meant to. Would you run that down for her? She can <laughs> This is very legal. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I was saying, we need to fill this vacancy for the remainder of the term starting May 15th, which is a year and a half. 
Well, I was just telling her as a matter of information not to influence your vote or decision at all that Helen Pimbleton had consented to run as a director there, but withdrew her name because we had two too many. We left the two on there. We had more than we needed for directors. And uh, she had consented to, to run as the director. Now, whether she'd consent to run it and to be a, a second vice president, I don't know. She Because of something about her work, she um, resigned as chairman of a state committee uh, recently. Now, I don't know whether that would interfere with her reasoning for resigning from that. Would, how to say? In other words, maybe the same reason that she might not want to accept um, first vice. You know, if she I don't get know. the original. The first vice president is not too demanding, though, is it? Unless you have to move up, like this second, 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 second
be better if I didn't. So you did one not. or two reasons. Uh -huh. I'm willing to do it, but Probably I do not know. know. Why don't you call? Rose, you see what you Rose knows. Rose, you Why don't we declare a three-minute recess? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there. Ms. Woodall was Second there. vice president. She, so. She's acted a hard time with the session, but she's done a good job of coming. I think some of our young members, you know, might get that too. I would like, I don't know who you have on the ballot to run, but I would like to suggest that we try and select somebody who's young and full of... Well, you mm -hmm. know that latest list of... Um, no, I just ran into all the different ladies kind of make your recommendation. I don't have, no, I don't have that. She has it. No, I don't have that. Well, Faith Shelton wants to be one. Oh, look how I spelled directly. But she was a president of a district, and she's a general, general leader there. She consented to go as a director, and she is, I mean, director. And she is the general leader one and had headed the district out in uh, Reno, Nevada. She's one of the young women. I mean, I'm giving that as information. What's her name? Faith Shelton. That's the one she referred to and that for me to send the sketch to. I believe she says she wants to be active in it. But then I was wrong on Diana Simmons because I we we persuaded her to be in, <coughs> and she got herself elected chairman of the section and the uh, public relations, and neither one of them made it. Where does she work, Carolyn? Shelton. Where does she work? You want to know about yeah. 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 She gets your paper? She'll be out of school very shortly now. Mary Gamage is very active. She did our program as far as MC, mm -hmm. did everything for about three years now. She really did. I nominate Mary Gamage. Very <laughs> talented and was acting as secretary too for a while. She the, surely has. I'll nominate her. You know, what's the next step? You just call her up. <coughs> <laughs> just call her up. Isn't she running for something? Director. Director. She's running for director. But we have more directors there than we need. We have two more than we need. I would say change it from director to supervisor. Well, ma'am. Chairman, could we have it the first choice and the second choice from? Oh, if she takes this, then she would automatically. Well, what I'm just on the ballot. What I'm referring to, could the, this board give us another person in the event she would not accept it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have a second choice on there that in the event that Mary Gamage would decline. Why don't we? Because I don't think we're going to get these people this afternoon is if I want. I can just do it. I'm not Mary Hale. Mary Gamage. Mary Gamage. Mary and Mary Hale. Mary Hale. Maybe they've been both nominated for office of second vice president. And if we do not get either of these to accept, could I suggest we empower our President to make a selection herself. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. uh, that scares me. The father's there is shaking her head no. <laughs> As a duty of the board and the board must go up for She couldn't act for us when we confirm it later. That usually comes up when there's something of an emergency nature that you just, and you cannot possibly have a meeting. Yeah. Well, 
Treasure. The treasurer's report for the month of March and um, the balance brought forth in February was $899.79. And the receipt membership dues were $2,281.46. And AJN subscriptions $24, which totaled $2,305.46. And the total was $899. 79 with 3,205.25. In disbursements for the month, rent $71, salary $594.52, phone $56.53, printing $488.94, postage and mailing $24, supplies and operational $63.60, AJN subscriptions $21, taxes $187.40, Miscellaneous $291.55, which was a total of $1,798.54. And care in the bank was $1,406.71. Check site was $534.92. And agreement with the bank statement was $1,941.63. And on deposit in the Atlanta Federal Savings, we have $1,121.88. And special account in the Atlanta Federal Savings is $1,648.95. So in the savings account, we have $2,770.83. And that was for March. And the disbursements for April, the total disbursements, we don't have the report ready yet, was $1,267.99. And the balance for May. Uh, is $1,395.58. Balance at present is $1,395.58. We're not doing too well. <laughs> We're not very well off. That's all. Uh, the report of the executive secretary. I 
Because you give it one for file, don't you? We put one on file. We keep it in the book. It's placed, it's on, placed file, on file automatically. Draw, just see it. That's right. It's placed on file automatically. And then you set the audit. The audit is supposed to have been completed. The treasurer's They have not returned our books, which makes it doubly hard for me to make a, a treasury report because I have to make a dummy form. And um, I don't have your written reports today. On Saturday before I went to the convention, I covered four hospitals that morning. We'd gotten out 1,500 invitations, 300 posters. And that afternoon on Saturday, I did the treasury report, finished it at 5 o'clock to see whether we'd have enough money for the check that we would issue because the auditors have our little savings book. It wouldn't have done us any good because we couldn't get to it. We had uh, another question about the income tax. That's the only reason I hate to change it because they do know us and they know what we've done. The income tax wanted to know about 1968. So I had to take it over to him to see about it. And he says that he has our tax. I must see about it between now and the 15th to get in. As our, our office didn't have to get it in on April 15th, but so folks be in, I'll have to contact you then. Uh, we have been extremely busy in the office and I had tried to cover all the meetings and to, uh, to get ready for the convention. And the next thing that I will do for you, uh, as soon as we have this program, will be to get you a list of the delinquent members. That's one of the questions I ask at Central Billing, and they will <coughs> supply us one. In the meantime, we'll have to check our own and pull the plates on it. So all the sections, you do to have a little check for $15. And we also will give you the cards of your delinquent members and your up-to-date members. That may take more than two weeks to check the big report. As you see, it's a rather voluminous thing, and especially with the central billing. But we've been busy in the office, and uh, everything's up to date until I can get the books and post them on that. Uh, report to Sam to any bylaws, Margaret. <laughs> Uh, we haven't done anything since last report. Will the uh, changes that were accepted affect it? Not until the state changes. Then we'll have to do something a little after October. Yeah. <laughs> Not very great. <laughs> <laughs> Ethical, legal, and professional standards. Ms. Wells is not here. She did not send a report. Finance, Mrs. Monk, no report. Legislation, Mrs. Rittenhouse. The committee has not met on the district. I have attended the state committee. I've been waiting for some direction that way. And um, the state was to send a packet of materials out to the members of that committee and we're to do homework and then we'll meet again this coming Saturday. So I hope after this meeting we'll have some kind of direction for the district to go to because you know this summer's approaching now and there is there's supposed to be a special committee with the legislators and um, this is the time now to start preparing for next year instead of waiting until January of 71. So we'll have a meeting probably in June. Uh, membership, Mom. The membership committee met on May 7th. We knew that two members, two of our eight members, uh, plus Ms. Atkins and Ms. Flynn, would be at the ANA convention. However, the date had been discussed with Caroline. It seemed better to have this meeting because we needed to approve the membership group that was pending before this board met today. We invited the directors of nurses, nursing of all hospitals to meet with us. Present at the meeting on May 7th were two members of the membership committee and Mrs. Kilgore from Piedmont and Ms. Owens representing Ms. Graves from Emory. Now we went ahead, it may not be legal, uh, but we reviewed and approved the list of prospective members first list dated March 15th and containing 70 names. The second list dated March 23rd containing 21 names, which was 91 uh, new members. 
we had a general discussion regarding the problems of attracting and holding potential numbers and related our discussion to similar problems with other professional groups. We reviewed the records and the computer data sheets which the executive secretary had given us, and we wish to recommend that an that she be employed be uh, directed to buy an appropriate file book to keep them in. The one that I had was not suitable. Our membership as of March was 628 members. We got in one today that you haven't seen that accounted for approximately 50 members. It was 39 members, 11 on first installment, 11 on second and third installment, and one associate. Which is just a little 50 bit more. 50 or I would estimate it to be 50. Um, well, if we say that we have 50 more, then we've got about 678 numbers. Is this, did I hear you say through March? Well, with the 50, that would It'd bring it up to date. Uh -huh. So that would be 678 numbers. It takes them six weeks to process those, so we are hoping to have more. The, um, but we're still behind at this time. What yep. to our budget calls for sixteen hundred and fifty in order to function financially. Well, Mrs. So. Sanders' name was on most cards. We were very impressed with the work she's done at her hospital. And uh, which one was that? She's just done a beautiful job, but the you know, really, I've asked so many people, and they just simply do not join. It's an apathy regarding membership. What's the uh, what kind of response did you get from two hospitals? Well, no, Sarah Helen Kilgore is the director of a school. She's not a director of nursing services. Uh, we sent a sheet to the director. Yeah. director of nursing services. But what kind of response did you get? Do they not consider membership relevant to their Well, staff? we had it was rather than informal. I wouldn't put words in either of the girls' mouths because it was a discussion. But it went around the, the like this. Something that never had occurred to me. I, I you know, click on things late that many people felt that the request from ANA for additional funds uh, did not include sufficient explanation as to why they wanted more money. <coughs> well, I just said, you know, they'd run out of money. That the views hadn't been, uh, uh, yeah. in, you know, increased, and with increased costs, I could well understand it. But they, I don't know whether it was Ms. Mrs. Graves or uh, Ms. Kilgore went on to say that there was some feeling among people that uh, some mismanagement had taken place. There was just, I, I think that it was not a valid thing. We were just talking about all of the straws at which people clutch to keep from participating and supporting. And we also talked about the splintering away of groups for the surgical conference, whatever the proper name is. And then we ended on a more hopeful note, and that was that these are problems that every professional group meets. And, you know, when you're trying to get every member of a profession to join, you can anticipate a great deal of lack of success. Uh, put again stress on, on the value of professional membership, and if some people do not wish to join, I mean, can make them join. I think Sarah Ellen was saying that her husband, he of course is not living now, but he was an engineer, I believe, and the value of his professional membership to him as a person, and he was the only one in his office, of course, and other engineers. He signed the things, and they went under his membership. Now, we didn't come up with any world-shaking or, or great solutions, but it was just a fact that this is the problem we're up against. 
I heard some things. I went to a forum on this year. Well, that's almost true here with Georgia Baptist when the director, when we ask about a representative on this program, and we mentioned about Miss Davis going to the convention or paying her dues, and said, no, she's not going to pay that done. Miss Davis doesn't have to do it, you know, the alumni. She didn't last year or this year, but they've agreed that they didn't want to join at the time. She did say that they would send a representative and that with the new economic security program that they think about it. Um, I think your committee, Merle, has been doing a real good job of getting, we seem to have more new members than we ever had before, if we could just get some of the old ones really back. been active. This one's <laughs> only successful. <laughs> and, uh, well, Annie Welsh is how still a well. How do you stay with Ms. Welsh sort of work together, don't yeah. you? Yeah. I was putting them both sides together. Yeah, I signed one card. You know, <laughs> but, but you know, <laughs> and I said, you know, here's another <laughs> one. I just wish we could get every member of this organization to get at least one, that's all it would take, <laughs> one new member or two new members this year. Joe Jones, you know, who was down at Comprehensive Health and told me she was going to join, and I asked Adrian to make a well, special she, trip over she's that night. She's great in, in service education. Well, and mm -hmm. so uh, she told me, though, she was going to join. She lives close to where Adrian mm -hmm. Ames' apartment is, and Adrian mm -hmm. was supposed to have gone over there one night. We kept mm -hmm. looking for her. She, she promised me she was going to join. Well, see, these things, they everybody's excited, and then they don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. Well, keep on plugging away. Well, they, they, they're all beginning. It's just as you said, I think they're clutching their straws. And well, now, they can't manage the money. Now, why should I pay dues in there? They can't manage the money. Well, they... I think it's too bad we If you look at the uh, House of Delegates report, they have expanded enormously uh, staff. It's just um, incredible to me because I was on the staff a long time ago, but the staff expansion uh, had had been, they've been, had done an enormous expansion of staff to give a big expansion of services. How effective, I wouldn't know that, but um, it's obvious that they, that with about 20, 15 to 20 percent of the nurses practicing nursing in this country be, be, being members, that they can't manage this kind of a program. Uh, with just that percent of them paying dues to an organization. You cannot serve um, five times as many people to the, the luxury and extent of services that that staff uh, was equipped to provide when only about a fifth of the people are paying for it. Same thing on the local level. We've got our changes. If we have a fourth of our potential membership, who's that? We don't have. Well, see, it's the same box. Less than 700 people. There must be 3,000 nurses working in. 4,475 mm -hmm. in this district. Mm -hmm. 4,475. Mm -hmm. And 600 uh, members. Which isn't 20%. It's the employers uh, uh, were put in a bind in a way, are in a bind in a way because of the labor market situation. But also, I think there's been a kind of a willingness to just let them get away with it. Directors of nursing you know, have had a problem because they felt like they and they didn't, uh, you know, didn't con consider their management, consider them the enemy in a way. The, the distortions of communication in the economic security program have created a good deal of, of excuse um, straws. And they are distortions. They are, are distortions, really, more than they are facts. But, you know, people, I use one word and, and it means something, and you use it and it means something else to you, and so on, and we get this kind of stuff. This, this is as much as anything. 
Well, I think too that we, we as a group have to work toward some sort of a goal for next year where we can see who's just interested in the district. And I think we might be able to do this by having some real good program meetings and cut out some of these long, drawn out business sessions. But you know, when you come right down to it, a fellow's got to get something out of it that they can see. And a program meeting is very well. We talked about that too. But you have a delightful program and you just, you know, think it's great. See, I had the program for two years. And I thought, you know, when we'd have a program at the fellowship, don't know that it was just superb. And of course, I was just prejudiced, see, and I would hear somebody else say something, and it was just kind of ho hum, you know. So you just do a real good program for a meeting of Fifth District, and I've heard them as I went out the door saying, I heard that for two months ago at the agency. I don't know what you can do. I really think we've got to have something like a A and A retirement plan. We now have a better insurance, liability insurance. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid as I get older, I realize that unless they can see something that does for them, they're not going to come. They just don't. And it, it really, uh, and it's it has to be a continuing, ongoing. We we have not had through the years. This has been one of my problems when I was on the staff enough communication to the members. Mm -hmm. Well, they won't come, of course, but... No, but I mean, through to. the mail, they're not getting enough And then the other thing that happens, costly. they're going to benefit from the advances the little bitty group makes regardless. Yeah. They're not penalized. So they would be very foolish to pay $100 for membership when they're going to get all the advantages anyway. Well, that's what Solomon tells us. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, see, the, uh, the Doctor Medical Association, AMA, and I'm not holding big, they don't attend meetings any better than we do, but by gosh, they wouldn't be caught, they wouldn't be allowed by their brothers to go in a hospital and practice or to be. Uh, call themselves like a doctor unless they were members. They, they, thing I there's understand a, though there's from some, some of the doctors factor. I've queried and that is that you can join your state and local medical society without joining the national. Now, is yeah. this true for the physician? This is brought up in some veterans um, that maybe this could happen in A&A. Well this is what some girls have told me. Now of course it's very little going to A&A. But I think it comes right down to it. They're just not interested in joining. They get the advantage whether they're members or not, and they let the other fellows do the work. I, I wish over the summer you all would be thinking about this. See if we can't come up next year with some kind of a theme or something that, that really gives our membership something they can grab a hold of, whatever I, it is. John, I, I think that talking too much to be already have my resignation accepted, but I really think things, uh, I think um, the uh, state and, and district levels got to do more visible stuff, and I've been one of those, I've been on the, on the <coughs> national staff, and I personally feel uh, that we've got a president now who will address herself to a few important things that national does that should not and cannot done be done by states and districts. And if I have any, have Hildegard's ear, I'm going to reinforce that. Because I think, if when I looked at that staff list today, the first time I really looked at the House of Delegates report, because I was about to give mine to Helen and then I wanted to take a quick look. And I was aghast, absolutely aghast, at the number of names on those lists that have been terminated by ANA because they had people running around, running into state organizations. Now, I I feel the nurses in Virginia did did a real poor job of their, of their bounden duty. They went there committed to no, they weren't going to help bail them out because if they got into it, let them get it out. But Two years ago when the league met down here, I was sitting talking to a young woman, a personable young woman, and she told me she was a field representative for the ANA. And I said, what does a field representative do? Well, we go around to, we go to the state, 
Association to see what we can learn and how we can help them. Presently, I was sitting over on the other side of the room next to a prominent leader of the Virginia nursing scene. And she said to me, I noticed you were talking to so-and-so, what she has to say. And I said, uh, well, she told me, she, I said, I was uh, puzzled because she had AMA on there and I asked her what she was and she's not a nurse. She's a, she worked for the Girl Scouts or something like that, you know, but she's a field representative for the ANA. Yeah, I know, she said. She's been in Virginia. And you know what the, what those field representatives are up to, what they're about? I said, well, no, I wasn't paying much attention when the House of Delegates, when they approved them, and I don't. What do they do? This person said she came into the state office and told the executive secretary, I'm here from the ANA to learn what I can about how your organization works in the event there would be any reason why the ANA needed to send someone here to take over the state work for a period, then I would be acquainted with your program so I could do that. Now, as far as I'm concerned, <coughs> Virginia nurses missed a real good opportunity to tell the ANA, now let's wait a minute and see what the heck your job is and ours is. Because the girl apparently just may have distorted the communication. I doubt if she was told to go out and say, I'm here to run your shop for you, in the case we decide we like it better than you do. But, but there was a real good opportunity for the nurses in Virginia to, to say, wait a minute, let's take a second look at what we are giving national the privilege of doing, the authority to do, and what we are doing in our hometown. And I oh, personally believe she you know, just we heard had that. one here too. Yeah. She didn't say that to us. Well, no, I know, but what did they really bring you that was relevant? She was rather helpful. Well, I think she must have misunderstood. Her orientation was in. All right. So, but Virginia should have challenged. They shouldn't now turn around and refuse to bail out. Yeah when they didn't do anything about that, but just mutter among themselves is what I'm trying to say. Well, I agree with you. Uh, the states and the districts can do certain things better, and ANA can address itself to federal legislation, security, <coughs> economic and other kind, insurance and what have you, relationships with other national organizations, and leave a lot of this other stuff to the states and districts. And I think we have a president and an executive that will do this, that have this kind of orientation. Well, I, I, I didn't mean to hold in a brief by a and having told her that, Merle, but the fact that she came to Virginia and told Virginia that, they should have been on the phone by A&A and asked what in the heck is going on here. I don't think she was really, she they, had if, 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 they did not if they did not challenge this, then they ain't got no business they now saying, let them bail them. themselves out, you know. Is so that what Virginia is going to do? Oh, yeah. Let's go on with our yeah, excuse me, nominations. Uh, after right. Nomination. What's this one? Excuse me. She said she did not have a quorum at that meeting. Did not. But why don't you? Oh, ratify that. Oh, okay. We need to ratify the action of uh, Merle's the um, the membership approval. Need a motion? If no objection. If there's no objection, the board will ratify the action of the membership action committee. Of the membership committee. We swore these other two girls in to be in that self <laughs> <That's true. laughs> All right. Uh, Nomination. Um, do you need to do anything about her recommendation for purchase? Well, we got one that fitted the other one from last year, and you see, we just started getting that mm -hmm. that book. Millers may have one. If they do, we don't need the the. I mean, it's I mean, our privilege to go on by. Go ahead and do that. I mean, they mm -hmm. expect us to do that. Yeah. But you see, they just started those directories on. Um, getting them going it's in just March. just a computerized long report. Uh -huh. She needs to try and put you yeah. Well, we had you. one for last year that was yeah. quite suitable and all. I had that. one I thought I could give you, but mine didn't fit. Yeah. The Committee on Nominations. 
She did not send a report. Uh, do you want the secretary to read that? I made up a list from the meeting. They did meet. They had all the uh, <coughs> people they needed for that meeting, and they decided since the only uh, um, Miss Pemberton withdrew since we had enough for directors, and the other two that uh, had been suggested who had not declined, had not paid the dues when I went to Miss McSwain, and she said she's going to join, and Martha Davis. Other than that, everybody else except one on there who said her commitments were not allowed to, so they put them all down and have enough for you about her. Rose ballot by the nominating committee that met April 22nd for, verse, for first vice president Adrian Ames from Public Health, Beverly Waters from Public Health, Mrs. Betty Brahma Kravitz from NSA, for secretary Mrs. Rose Dilde EACT, Mrs. Jody Todd NSA, for directors Mrs. Jewett Adams from Public Health, Mary Gramish from NSA. Ms. Betty Sexton from NSA, Charity Wells, NSA, Captain Aiken, Public Health, Mrs. Lott, Public Health, Mrs. Rittenhouse, Public Health, and Mrs. Faye Sheldon, General Duty. For Chairman, Committee on Nominations, Mrs. Elner Volz, Public Health, and Mrs. Annie T. Welch, NSA. Thank you. Thank you. You've got two people from the DeKalb County Health Department. Like to me, that's not so good. Mm -hmm. Well, they're the ones that were suggested and consented. Yeah. That's you have to have three, don't you? No, you have the ballot covered. You have to See, have two Adrian for and, and Beverly well, are both one, employed. One would get it, uh -huh. Huh. Only one would get it, so. Yeah, I know, I was just thinking. It's all right, I'm just mm -hmm. making that mm -hmm. list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid it's wrong. I wish they were not on. Well, what I mean, they're on there for just public health, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> just goes to show that the public health people <laughs> <laughs> are real good supporters. Did they approve it? If the, if the board does approve it, according to that, then it just needs to be It mentioned they on the main meeting shall approve the, the ballot. The ballot. Uh, May me and the board of directors, uh, Michelle, Clinton, and in the election. Uh -huh. Well, I thought you approved the ballot, too. Did you know what I was saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says it just shall be presented at the main meeting of the board of directors. Well, but we can present it. If it can. <laughs> Go. Uh, emergency health preparedness and national defense. Mrs. Rose and Allison Peters. You were to complete the ballot if it wasn't ready, so that right. you have enough. All right. Uh, program, Annie. Miss Crawford. Your oh, program. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just taking it out of my pocket. Uh, the last program meeting for this year is Thursday evening at um, it's at the uh, Mental Health Institute, and we hope we'll have a good crowd. They usually get a good crowd over there at a meeting, so maybe that's a turn in the in the road for us. New Horizons for Atlanta nurses. It uh, should be a real good. Meeting. Should be a good meeting, and I Me hope we'll have a lot of people there. It's easy parking and all that sort of thing. I don't know whether it's too late or not, or maybe you've already done it. I was too nice. Yes, they were invited. Uh -huh. uh, Carolyn took around. Yeah, they uh, were invited. Programs to all starts at seven thirty. So yeah, I've heard a lot of students say they were going to come. Oh, oh good. good. I thought you were in. Uh, public relations. Let me tell you about that. She called me Saturday night. I first had gotten out the 1,500 invitations, and Ms. Monaco had made us a little poster, and under it she put all professional nurses, student nurses, and friend, and you know, in, to invite friends too, and then put the program on it. So we sent those 300 out to the hospitals, and uh, Ms. McSwain made us five posters. 
Well, I didn't get to Piedmont, but I sent each of the hospital uh, uh, posters for the bulletin board. Each of the school of nursing, the poster, except Piedmont, which we didn't cover, and asked them 25 special invitations of the people they'd want to represent us. Well, anyhow, I sent Ms. Um, the publicity director said that she would attend the window displays earlier. She met in December. She did not meet at this meeting when we were planning, but all the information, including the editorial that had just been released on Florence Nightingale's 150th anniversary, and um, we would have had an opportunity of having quite a good uh, news coverage. So th this morning, after she called me Saturday night and said that she had not sent out anything, I could have gotten Ms. Monaco had I known she wasn't going to do it. I sent 30 of the little posters to send to the news media, telephone, the television, so forth. All they'd have to do is be please announce. But at any rate, they were not sent out, so the only thing I knew to do, I sent a special delivery letter to uh, Ruth Kent, urgent, you know, for tomorrow's program, and asked them to announce it. And then I fixed a little article and took it to the journal and the Constitution, and I told them while the invitations had been out, the retired nurses, or the inactive ones, had not been notified. So maybe they'll do something for us. I'm just sorry it hadn't been done because it's the yeah. first time in 26 years, first time in 10 years we haven't had a program, at least a television program during our nursing. Mm -hmm. Publicity committee just forgot. Didn't come and resigned and uh, nothing All was done. All No, the chairman. And hadn't had a meeting. She called it before Christmas. And at that time, stated we were going to do the uh, television and Bill and Bowden, you know, production manager and the Davison's window display and elaborate Wasn't she plan. the one that asked to be yes. on that? Yes. That's why I say I don't say anymore. She had more. something planned for uh, Davison's window I and I don't know what, what happened. happened. So I called her this morning and sent them back to me so I'd have them in the morning that I'd go ahead and try to rush a few of them out to spot them out. We need yeah. to uh, appoint a new chairman of public relations in Landron. Well, 26 years I've done it, and only one year have I had a chairman that worked all through the year. Either they had illnesses in the family, or resigned, or something has happened. And that is a fact. Will there be somebody else on that committee who will take it for the remainder for three months in case something comes up? Wait a minute, I'll take you it is. Virginia Brown, Rose, Miss Dilvase, you on by virtue of your office, yeah. Mildred Burns, and then I'm on it. I sure want to get her started in something else. Oh, we've got Millie won't because oh, Millie's been so. Yes, I know. She's been there. So that leaves Miss Virginia Brown, Miss Rose, still there. Not Rose, can you talk speak for Rose? <laughs> I don't know Mrs. Brown at all. Does anyone? She's the greatest. Who was the chairman? Diana. I didn't know. Someone there. Mm -hmm. Shall we ask Mrs. Brown if she would assume these duties for the rest of the summer and then work toward, there probably won't be too much for the remaining three months. This is the one big thing, yeah. and then the friendship dinner. I mean, this time we try to give it full coverage, and unfortunately we're just not going to get the coverage at all unless we get three of those little things. The posters, I think, will help and the students, but other than that, we'll have nothing.
Well, I, I feel compelled to, to say something. Uh, I think next year we should really work for getting some extremely active people on this committee. The apathy on everybody's committee is, is really getting to me. <laughs> it's on no side. Well, you can imagine how it is with me, and especially with the fact you don't know from one month to the next where you're going to have enough for me for the rent. Uh, reports of Special Representative Merle, your health commission. Uh, <clears throat> the committee to which I was uh, appointed was called Joint Health Commission on Area-Wide Planning. We now call it the Metropolitan Atlanta Council for Health, or MAC Health. Wait a minute. What is it? The Metropolitan Atlanta Council for Health, MAC Health. Oh, you've got a, whatever they call it, yeah. action? Now, meetings are scheduled monthly, with the next meeting to be this Thursday, May 14th at 12 noon. At the April 16th meeting, the President, <coughs> Dr. Robert Wells, presided. Reports were given on one, the Omnibus Family Planning Grant. This is a proposal that will be submitted to OEO in Washington with Economic Opportunity Atlanta as the applicant agency and MAC Health as the delegate agency. Nine community agencies will be involved. Grady Hospital MI Project, uh, Planned Parenthood Atlanta, <coughs> and the rest will be the Metropolitan Atlanta County Health Department. Now the anticipated amount of money that will be available should the grant be obtained, and uh, we are pretty sure we will get it, is $500,000 annually for the next five years. And the second thing that happened in the last meeting was Dr. Moore, chairman of the Facilities Review Committee, presented the A.G. Rhodes Nursing Home proposal for expansion. This proposal was from 91 beds at Rhodes home to 125 beds. The uh, proposal was sent to the members of Mac Health prior to the meeting, and it was approved with a few minor suggestions. Third, Dr. Vernell Fox outlined the severity of the drug problem in the Atlanta area and requested Mac Health's approval of a proposed new agency got to be called the Atlanta Council on Alcohol and Drugs, or Mac Ad. <laughs> he asked that uh, Mac Health give council help and support. For example, names of people who are interested in the drug problem who might be uh, interested in serving on their board and people who could provide technical assistance and consultation. Madam President, if you care to give me any names, I can send them down the line. All right, now the agenda for the meeting on Thursday are two items. One, we are to act on recommendations of the Facilities Review Committee in the matter of Crawford W. Long's expansion and modernization request. And since this is a board meeting, I thought you might want to see the one that's been sent to us. And I'm supposed to have read all this and represent you all at this meeting on Thursday. And really, it is an excellent thing I'm getting them, and I guess we'll keep them in our library somewhere. But would you be interested in seeing what comes? That to be this thing. Then we had a uh, discussion of the proposed activity of one of the programs. There are six programs. I've given them to you before. I didn't bring all my books because I had this that Caroline had given me. But the thing that we have to discuss is something Evangeline's really held our feet to the fire about. I shouldn't say that with that on. Uh, Evangeline Lanyon is the other nurse on the group, and she's chairman of a committee called Program and Orientation. And Evangeline told me on the side that they wanted to do something, you know, in the name of her committee, and she wasn't going to have such as that. And so she wouldn't sign it. And so they're going to discuss the program and orientation committee and what they're supposed to do. And 
And a pensioner's going to get those duties, you know, are not dated, and we're going to do it the right way. This might be what you want to do for the board members and committee members. We really need to. I was going to have it typed and they were writing the budget proposal. Okay, I'm sorry, it's all right. You know, you okay. have that. You want to on number show? Ms. Hilde, what you would just really need would be the report and action for the minutes on that. I thought I'd save you from writing a great bit on that. What any action on that? I mean, just of any action that we do on that. That you would not have to incorporate it in your report. If you call on me at the program, will you be calling on me to give a report Thursday? Or when is our next meeting? Yeah, it's, it's Thursday, but it's a program meeting. Well, I won't have to give that one. No. Well, because I won't no have business. No business. No business. I, uh, I like your recommendation. I think this might really help to take this to. You know, if we had some sort of a workshop, an informal workshop meeting where all, as soon as all the committees are put together, we all got together and just hashed out things and came up with a theme for the year and really worked together towards some sort of a goal. I think it would be well, a real state has done this, hasn't Yeah. But, you know, the state comes in, in February, and by then, you know, three or four months, gone by and uh, that's too late. <laughs> don't have it in the first month, don't have to bother to have it. That's right. Uh, the Model Cities program, the only thing I have to say about that is the dental proposal went before the Model Cities Board uh, and will, it has been sent to Washington for funding so now they have a medical private doctor's proposal and a private dentist proposal for the people of Model City. They've both been accepted? They have been accepted by the board. They are now in Washington for funding. Uh, reports of sections. Millie is not here for EACC. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Um, we uh, lost one of our most beloved members, Alice, Bud, and I, I don't believe we had uh, any activity since we had a meeting in April. <coughs> so that, uh, we had a dinner meeting in April, and it was uh, uh, very, uh, we felt like it was a fair success. We had about 14, 12, 14 members present. We had one guest. We had uh, extended an invitation to any guests that the members might wish to bring. And this gentleman was was uh, director of runs the medical clinic, about which I know very little. But it is a, 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 a pool for uh, uh, services of. A uh, anything from an RN home to a maid. And the nurse who brought him was uh, the, uh, the RN employed. So <clears throat> I uh, just wondered about this if this, if this uh, medical school is known to our district. I had not heard anything about it before. I mean, I guess probably I just hadn't been informed, but it was the first knowledge I had of it. I had heard about it, but I really didn't know how it worked. They have an agency in the building where the hospital association used to be 1720 Peachtree. The young lady who was a director came down and joined the association. She's a cross of long graduate, yes. I believe. Very nice, very personable. And she brought me a list of the rates on there. They are advertised in the yard section, and they charge $42 a day for private business. Mm -hmm. so and we've had 
had many calls from doctors resenting it. It's mm -hmm. an uh, are syndicated uh, agency okay. in about 20 major cities, and they supply any type of services from stenographic on to. Mm -hmm. But she is a member, and, and uh, I guess she joined for that reason. She, she probably was there. She probably got brought him for, for business reasons. What other kinds of services? Medical technology? Well, they have uh, practical uh, nurses. They mm -hmm. have aid, aid. babysitters. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh -huh. Set up sitters. For, for not for not just nursing services. No, no. Secretarial service, any no, kind of service. It's, a, it's an employment agency. They pay them a salary, and you call in just as a registry, well, and you want uh, nurses. Like you're going to pay, uh, in addition to the $30, you're going to pay $12 shift more to get <coughs> an hour. Uh, private union nurse. So it's very expensive. Yeah, there wasn't mm -hmm. anything said about this additional services yeah. without our meeting. We, they I gave us a list. She let me have a list down there so can send the customers. customers. They call it a medical pool. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the name? It's in your classified section mm -hmm. there, the yellow pages there. Mm -hmm. Something of a registry with mm -hmm. all the services mm -hmm. for hospitals. Ms. Langford, <coughs> do you have a report from occupational health? We did not have a meeting. Public health, Barbara. Yes, we had a meeting April the 9th at the DeKalb County Health Center, and it was a thrill because it was my first time to see the building. It was beautiful, but we had very good attendance, and it was again Dr. Vanell Fox was kind enough to talk with us, and we had a real good attendance. Uh, unfinished business. I didn't know where to put that about the convention on there. After I finished the agenda, I had no other space, so I thought, well, at least we ought to notify the members in case you don't know that uh, if you did want to hear from any of us, the dues did go up to 12.50. All members passed 62 who are. Do you mind if I go ahead and give no, the report? You have somebody else. But I anyhow, am. The, well, let's let Ms. Ms. Um, you do that. I just Margaret put that in there. Let her do that. A delegate. Mm -hmm. uh, um, first of all, I'd like to say this is one of the busiest conventions that I ever attended. And it's real funny because uh, we got down there uh, Sunday. And Sunday and Monday morning, I heard remarks, well, what's wrong? This is the deadest place I've ever, you know, what's wrong with a and It's dead. I felt it. And then all of a sudden, it was just the opposite. <laughs> uh, it was very exciting, I think. It was very annoying at times because I think they were very petty in some of uh, they, I mean ANA members, and some of the things they were doing, instead of paying attention to the issue that was coming up, they were arguing with the parliamentarian, they were arguing with the lawyer, I mean actually telling them as if they didn't know their business. And Miss Cornelius, the lawyer, Mr., I don't remember the parliamentarian's name, but they bent over backwards to not only uh, be parliamentarily accurate or uh, correct, but to give everybody the opportunity of saying what he wanted to say. Miss Cornelius was a genius, I think, and the way she conducted the meeting and how she ever did it. Uh, they told us on Tuesday morning that she had been involved in an accident uh, Monday night. She was hurt, and we didn't know it. Uh, Monday night when they had the, you know, the formal meeting and all the state presidents and so forth came in, she came in in her long tail dress, just as pretty as could be. We didn't know if she was ragged, hurt. but otherwise... Well, it's... you couldn't tell it from where we were sitting. Mm -hmm. But the next day, her arm was in a sling, and I understand she had a dislocated shoulder, but she didn't leave the, the chair 
very often. She stood, or I believe they have something to sit on up there, but it looks like she's standing. But she was right with it uh, most of the time. About three times um, she let the, the vice president uh, take the chair for her. Only one time did she let the vice president take the chair so that she might speak to an issue. And this is the only time I saw her lose a cool, and uh, she just couldn't take it. She had to speak to this particular issue, but she was very much to the point. Now, some of the things that came up, the first thing, as I think of it uh, off the cuff, was a resolution was proposed right early in the convention about the society in crisis, and really it was pretty bad, according uh, to our way of thinking, and it was voted out. And it had to do with all the, well, the crises that we were talking about, the kids on the campus and the camp situation, and the boys in Viet, not Vietnam, but um, Cambodia. Cambodia. And it was almost, if you read it, you almost got the idea that they were criticizing the government, really. So, anyhow, <laughs> well, <laughs> this was voted out, but those people who were so concerned with the resolution about the society in crisis didn't do a doggone thing but rewrite it. And put it in a different form, changed enough so that it could get back on the floor and be voted on again. And you know they passed it. Everybody was so tired. I hope they didn't pass that pass the resolution to send sympathy to the kids. No, that did not. Some yeah. states did send sympathy, but this did not get back. But they did vote to send the president a telegram forcing. Had to come as a from AMA, President of the United States, Mr. Nixon. Mr. Nixon. In essence, well, let me tell you how ridiculous they got. A, a motion got on the floor uh, to the, the move to support. I'm looking at it now. The move AMA to support, support the, the uh, government of the United yes. States. And some of the platform people got up and said, I don't want to be put in a position of voting yes or no to such a thing as this. And finally, that got out. They got it some by some parliamentary procedure. They got that. <laughs> I don't and then remember they how it got done, but they got it out. But know. they did, in the end, vote to send the, the president a telegram from, uh, as speaking from AMA, that Oh, in essence, we don't like uh, this uh, military. We don't like um, combat. We don't like um, the fact that we are in Vietnam and Cambodia and so forth. So forth. Well, anyhow, that carried. It did carry. And then they wanted to expunge all the I like discussion it. from the minutes. Yeah. But they voted. But Georgia yeah. did did not vote for this last. Um, they voted against this thing about the telephone, I like to say that. All of us. The most you mind if I tell you what that motion was, Ms. Uh, deplore violent action on campuses, condemned acts that provokes that, and condemn apathy that allows it. Is that what you had done on it? I, that I, was have, I don't have any notes here from the convention. I didn't exactly come prepared. Uh, one of the, uh, the second thing I think uh, might have been, of course, a rehashing again of the financial crisis in ANA. And maybe I think this, uh, the states maybe have not done their homework because all the state presidents, except maybe two or four, I've forgotten which, uh, were in New York in what, February, I talked to you all about. Mm -hmm. And I think if they had gone home and interpreted this factually as it was presented to us rather than emotionally, maybe a lot of this stuff that came up again 
at convention might have been avoided, and we spent, well, Thursday morning, we were still on Tuesday's agenda. And uh, along with that, of course, came um, the bylaws, because you can't talk about finances exactly without going to the bylaws that has to do with dues. And uh, I was very surprised because I had heard, got rumored around that Florida and California would go so far as to walk out of the convention rather than let this dues increase pass. And during the discussion of, I believe it was of the dues, I may be wrong about it, uh, California did talk us. They, we had, had to spend things, I guess. I'm going to check my terminology. But anyhow, we had to call a halt to what was going on, and California did march out. And, uh, but they were back within the 15 minutes that they had to talk us. And it was nice to know that a hundred of the 143 delegates did vote for the dues increase. And Florida wasn't too vocal about it. Uh, I was sure they were going to be rabid, but they weren't too vocal. And and I, I was really surprised at how easily the dues increase got passed. It, it was just plain after everybody talked that it was a must uh, if, if we would have an ANA. So along with um, our financial condition came by law changes. And they were raised twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Twenty-five dollars. I think what some what scares somebody is you go out and you say um, that your your dues were doubled. Well, California's dues, including A and A, is around a hundred dollars. Well, it would scare them to death. I mean, general people you say it's double, that they're two hundred dollars, but that's not the case. It's only increased twelve fifty. Margaret, did they ever did they ever talk about the difference in salary levels for work? for nurses. Did they, did they ever make a comparison? Nobody had addressed themselves to the issue, to that issue at all when I There was a, a discussion of um, some people paying so much and some people paying others. For instance, if they were below, if their salaries were below the poverty level, which is what, $3,000, that they should pay the 1250 and if they, it was above that, they pay the $25. They brought many things in the no. discussion. Well, I, no, I meant that we haven't had a raise in dues for several years. I wonder oh. if there was ever any. Oh, yeah. All of this. Uh, uh, talk about that because uh, they weren't making a real law. I think whoever talked to the issue must have been pretty good because um, it w really was uh, surprising that, um, that the dues got increased. At least from the rumors I'd heard before and what I heard when I got down there. Um, it was another interesting thing um, about the convention was that a lot of young people there. I was real thrilled. And the young people that got to the microphone and spoke, they knew what they were talking about, they knew what they wanted to say, and they were very intelligent with it. Um, and there, at the convention, many states, I don't know the exact <coughs> amount that was contributed, but a considerable amount was contributed to the members' emergency fund um, from state and just individual contributions and so forth. You Prior to that, the at the convention, yeah. Prior to that, I think it was something like $300,000 had been contributed to them, <coughs> which is a far cry from $10 per member. There was considerable discussion about the change of a headquarters location, but I believe the, um, the contract for present location goes to 1974, so the end of that was to um, mm -hmm. refer it back to a study group wanting to refer, but somehow it got back to the study group and a decision to be made and ready um, 
to be acted on. I believe the board must have been empowered to to take the recommendations of the study group so that the change could be made by the time the present contract in New York uh, was um, up. Most the, the three, the two places really that was considered most of all was Washington, D.C. and Denver. Denver being central, and this is one of the one of the reasons for uh, change was not only the cost, but also a more central location. And um, in, in D.C., of course, uh, you have a group of people there already um, to watch legislature so that had uh, and then there was one little place in Michigan that nobody uh, had ever heard Hatchstone, of. Hatchstone, Minnesota. Min Minnesota. Uh, Hatchstone, Minnesota is uh, a unique mining town uh, in the Indian Territory almost. They didn't take any action? No, it, it's to be for mm -hmm. studied from the standpoint of location, I mean actual location and from the standpoint of financial And what the journal and other groups definitely related to nursing care. Oh, one thing they talked about when they were talking about, uh, you saying journal reminded me, when they were talking about increasing views, somebody proposed a move that uh, the journal be included as part of the views, but this was financially impossible, mm -hmm. and so that didn't take place either. And I just got to mention, some of you may have seen it, but um, French Klein and Smith made 800 tickets available to the delegates from, and they prorated, because we had over 1,100 delegates. So they were prorated to, as to the number of delegates from the state. Well, we had 17 delegates, but we only got 10 tickets. But I was one of the fortunate ones who was able to go to the play. And I had not seen it, I understand it's been on television, called Concept. And they could easily have been seasoned Broadway actors. They were that great in their performance. And of course, the average age of the performers was 21, and they had had about 40 years of drug addiction, including heroin. Heroin. Never mm -hmm. can say it. But uh, and one ball, the question was asked: Did you start with? Uh, did you think marijuana was uh, leading up to hard drugs? And he said, well, he could only answer that he promised his family definitely he would not go beyond marijuana. You know. And but he found one day that marijuana was not giving him the lift or the kick that he wanted, and then he went right on, and he was one who had gone to hard drugs. And without any props other than some look like apple boxes painted black, no stage props whatsoever. They presented a play which was very sophisticated. It used the rawest kind of street language, but it, it was one of the best things I had ever seen. Now, I saw some people look very upset over it because the language was really street, skid row, but it was great. And I hope that someday it will be, you will have an opportunity to see it on television. I'd like to see it brought here, but I don't know. It's from day, uh, these, uh, these people were still in therapy at Davy Top Center in upstate New York. And uh, as you might know, it has to do with finding yourself and why you're on drugs and so forth. 
There's one other thing, and I really didn't mean to talk this much, but um, the most involved nurse I think you read about in the newspaper, but Sherry made a little spell of the five most involved nurses. And, um, well, three of us here can sit back and read. Most of them were the public health activities. Uh, and the one who won it was an Indian, and she was one of two black feet, feet Indians. And it was so interesting to see her. We put such a, a, a thing about uniforms, and she wore pants most of the time. Come on, come on, like a, a kid's um, snowsuit. Uh -huh. You know, that's what it looked like. She has to this is what this she was. And she, she said the great. biggest compliment she ever had was when she drove up to some place and somebody says, oh, oh, who's that coming? You know, Oh, that's nobody. That's just Miss um, Aldrin. Oh, oh, that's just Aldrin. Aldrin. <laughs> and she said that's the highest compliment because she had worked, and her great contribution was her work with the Indians because they had such a high suicide rate. It was 40% higher than the national average, and she had been able to, as a one-man one lady person, to really changed that suicide rate. Mm -hmm. She had a crisis intervention. Yeah. As I Herself. say, I could get, really get excited. You could get excited at Did convention. Did you see it in her travel clothes? Mm -hmm. yeah. That evening? Oh, she was the most gorgeous to me. You know, those Indians do the uh, doe skin. It's just like, feels like velvet. Oh. And beaded and, and fringed, you know. And oh, boy, was she an elegant one. I saw that evening. Yeah. See on the hotel lobby in a travel clothes. Make y'all feel real, real sorry for us or glad for us or something. Clothes. No travel, travel clothes. clothes. Travel clothes. Oh, or Indian clothes. I said travel. travel. There was a motion made, I think, on Wednesday. I'm not sure that on Thursday we stay in session until the agenda was caught up or until 12 midnight and I think they meant they were facetious in saying 12 midnight <laughs> but I want you to know kiddo we stayed there till 12 midnight mm -hmm. and we had a break for lunch and a break for dinner mm -hmm. not too long I <laughs> well, really, well, we've done a little more because somebody had to go, to, it was a holy day, and so they had to, they had to go to Mass, and the, if they didn't have it at a certain time, they wouldn't have gotten to the Mass. I wish we could have had that film this week for our and what? meeting that be involved. It's 13 yeah. minutes, and it is utterly charming. It shows these five nurses who were the finalists and the be involved nurse. We had a nurse, by the way. Did you know that we had a nurse in the Be Involved uh, mm -hmm. campaign? And they really royally treated them down there. Mm -hmm. Although Merle was also a delegate, and she couldn't even go to Myrtle 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 one of the parties. Yeah. No, Myrtle. no, she wasn't one of the five. But she was one of the yeah. 30. Yeah, one of the 30. She was one of the contestants. And she said they really treated her royally. Carolyn, do you want to add to that? What was the motion about people over 62? Well, all, on the dues there, all, the thing that really is pertinent to us in that respect is that all in study and full-time study may come in as an associate. All those over 62 who make the minimum of Social Security, and of course all those who are unemployed, they tried to insert the word employed in nursing, but it all ended up that some of the fears there were that they were afraid that these people coming in as associates, having voting rights, would take over. And uh, I, I question that because we only got 32 out of 500 new graduates and only seven associates. But at any rate, that was after the much deliberation that is the, the new ruling beginning September 1st. They tried to delay it for another year, and uh, you'll probably notice they have a $300,000 note that's due in May got to be met, some of the uh, problems, the financial problems. But it will be, it will be effective September 1st. 
that we'll have associates who will have all privileges. In other words, everybody will get to vote uh, when, when this election committee goes out that uh, are, are not delinquent in the views. Uh, there is one old piece of business. <laughs> old business. Old, old business. Unfinished business. <laughs> Uh, that I even hate to mention because of the lateness of the hour, but I will just warn you that we will be having probably <laughs> a called meeting early in June to do something about our financial situation unless God all of a sudden sends us 2,000 members. <laughs> but I think uh, we should do this when we're fresh We have been promised that they would help see us through, but certainly before we make any advance or anything like that, we need a full resume of how we stand. Membership. Who is it? Our foundation was called through last year and the year before. And incidentally, incidentally, I'm supposed to usually go on vacation in June or there's no reason why I shouldn't go ahead and work it as I have previously, is it? Because yeah. July is the one month we don't have meetings. We need one month to get in there and get that office cleaned up. It hasn't been done in three years. It's never been up to date. Yeah. New, yeah. Uh, at the convention, there was a Florence Nightingale stamp. The first edition, is it? First edition. No. First issue. First date of issue. First date of issue. Why did we get us? Why can't you? Orion Magazine. Orion Magazine. Orion Magazine. Oh. Uh, new business. Or we need to appoint an auditor of election. Ms. Lewis. Ms. Lewis. 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 I, I so moved. All those in favor of Ms. Hey, Lewis. Hey, those things I got to help said to hold off. They weren't going to do it anymore with the process. Well, <laughs> it was just, it worked too hard. Yeah, Ms. Lewis, you make a lot of they, I mean, I, I, I'm just telling you the truth. They said they worked too hard for me not to offer their services. Uh, well, I couldn't pay like them all. So, well, quickly, you know, last year I said I would get it done, you remember? So, <laughs> no, he buried me. First time we just crushed you, good. And, and you can't have it done in less than you might be able to do, even if we have to raise it. I don't know. I'll go. say appointed auditor of election. Appointed though the word mm -hmm. is auditor, auditor of, election. of election. I knew mm -hmm. we had put uh, some money in there. I put some money in there. Oh, well she did she say I say it at 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 seventy at five at seventy five well, not more than that. Is there a second to the motion? Least <laughs> motion has been seconded. All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? The motion is carried. I didn't get who seconded this vote. It was just a uh, speak up. Barbara. And we 
also have to appoint a committee on election. Ms. Uh, Langford served on that last time. Um, Ms. Fitzpatrick, yes. I was trying to think of the other one. Oh, there was one more. Who served with you? those ballots last year, right? This <laughs> this I know. It. It, Carolyn Dalton. Yes. I think That's I might have helped, but I didn't, I wasn't, didn't you? uh, you know, some came from from help like some, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't you come and help some? Yeah, I did help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Martha Davis? Mm -hmm. No. Martha didn't come. You were the one, Ms. Armstrong. Yeah, I know. I was there, but I was thinking of her. Yeah, I believe it's just your three. I need to come down state, Yeah, it was state. Yeah, I guess they had to. If you'll give me the minutes, I'll tell you about it. It was appointed last April the, April the 7th. I looked this morning to see whether we had it. I'll be glad to help with it if it comes after June. You know, if we had, if we had four or five people, this would make this uh, a lot easier task. It was April before the call meeting before you went to Europe. First of April, special call meeting. Here it is. Elizabeth Langford, Chairman, Ms. Mary Gamage, Ms. Uh, Catherine Fitzpatrick, or were the ones appointed, but Ms. Gamage couldn't come. She had finals, and I believe Ms. Ms. Armstrong. When, when does the order of elections, when is that? I mean, when do they meet? Yeah, it has to send out these the ballots. Uh, uh, it's 40 days. 40 days. So it would be August. And at least 30 days preceding uh, the annual meeting of ballots should be mailed to each member. They get the list at 40 and then they give it. It has to be mailed to 30. So we have to direct them, and we went ahead and pull the names again. So this year, we hope I'm going to get some tabs tomorrow, all of them, on my dresser grant plate. And those on the installment plan, I'm going to put one for each of those things. So when we get ready to do it, it'll be easy to pull them out. And uh, it's going to be quite a job to, to do that master checking on that of those that expire in March and some in July and, and on the flexible membership now. So, uh, that's the only way I know to do it, especially when it's all And even then we'll have to check with him as far as the date. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's appoint somebody. I'm going to be a partner, Miss Langford, and Miss Patrick, and Miss Armstrong. You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> it would be impossible to meet the third this year. Right. Third where is that? <laughs> well, I, I, I will certainly try. Margaret. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to arrange to get off on that day. Oh, I was going to ask Miss Peacock and she just told me it was up to Miss Armstrong. <laughs> 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 yeah, but like I say, it's later than June. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a lot of part of who can we get on? August 1 would be before you go to the first of the year. Be uh, yeah, 30 days before the year. I'm coming out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before August. I mean, around the first of the year. Who did you make this chamber date? I had this length of the year. And I declined to tell Judy Ragsdale said that she would be happy to serve on any. Yes, she's the uh, medical pool nurse. Okay. Oh, she? 
Okay, then the uh, committee on elections. Excuse me, how many people did you say? You had uh, I have Armstrong, Peacock, Fitzpatrick, and Ragsdale. And I'm at Clinton. And Ella Bowles. No, 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 but she can't She could be. Oh, Ella? She could be. She could be. Oh, Ella? She could be. She could be. She could be. She could be. She could be.